Today we will talk about five common mistakes that a lot of importers make within Xeon Customs Clearance. Uh, today you will learn things like ways that an overseas supplier can ruin your compliance with New Zealand authorities. Situations when you are paying too much or too soon. How New Zealand Customs or NPI by security will charge you and some other hidden costs that you may not be aware of. Last but not least, there will be a giveaway during the show, so make sure you stay and watch the whole webinar. Welcome to the show for business owners. Proudly brought to you by easyfreight.co.nz. If you want to learn other business tips, then make sure you subscribe to our channel. And by the way, feel free to type your comments during the talk. I will uh, do my best to read every single one and obviously I will answer. If I miss something, please feel free to type it again because there will be a lot of comments in the stream. The first thing that we notice a lot of importers are missing is that if you've been trading for a long enough time, at least for a year or more, and you have a good credit history, you have good background, then you could potentially get a credit account with the New Zealand Customs, which means that you don't have to pay import taxes up front. And you could save a lot of money by doing that. Not only it helps with your cash flow, but it will give you extra money when your money will do the work for you, whether you use the money in the business somehow or you simply reinvest them in any other way. If you imagine a consignment worth $10,000 or $100,000 and you have to pay 20% import customs fees, whether it's 5% duty and 15% import GST, then it could be anywhere from $2,000 or more that you will keep in your pocket and use the way you want. But obviously you'll have to pay it later. Sometimes it could be two weeks later. Sometimes it could be five weeks later. All depends on your personal circumstances. If you've got any questions about how to get a credit account, then you can uh, type it in the comments below and one of our team members will give you more information or you can uh, give us a call and we can talk you through the whole process. We can help you uh, in some way so you can avoid uh, common mistakes. Another thing about common mistakes with New Zealand Customs is that while you import goods to New Zealand and you got used to paying import duty, you may not realize that you actually are able to apply for a concession code and have your product become duty free. It's not easy and it's not cheap, but if you do it on a regular basis, say a couple of times or more a year, you could, if it's five or 10% in duty and you do the calculations, you could save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, if you apply for a concession code and plan to import your goods on a regular basis. You may wonder how much does it cost to get a concession code. If it's one product and simple enough, then allow at least $500 for New Zealand Customs Service to consider your application and then for the time of the customs broker or freight forwarder, which could be a yeah, same amount, at least $500 or a couple of hundred dollars on top. But in saying that, you will save a lot more if you import goods on a regular basis. Feel free, type your comments uh, down below or any questions about any particular topic. It doesn't have to relate about these five mistakes. You, if you remember any other mistake that you had yourself and you want to know how to avoid it, feel free to type it now. Coming back to this concession code, how to get it and how to uh, minimize your import duty. Not only have to pay for the service, and it's not guaranteed that you will get it. It will take at least a couple of months to go through the whole process uh, because you would have to make aware interested parties. If there is an industry which relates to your product, they have to have a chance to dispute your duty-free claim and they will protect because they want to um, obviously sell their own products or they've got other reasons and that's the reason for uh, for a duty to protect local supplies that's one of the reasons therefore if they object you would have to prepare your case wait for it and if you've got a solid proof you may be able to get this concession code and you would have to supply evidence to prove that your product is going to meet the requirements so once again it's going to take a lot of time and paperwork from your side and from the customs broker side and uh, our team is able 
um, to help you as well. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, send us an email and we will give you some guidance on that. The third mistake that we see that a lot of importers make is that if you see the goods being sold in New Zealand, some importers automatically think, well, I can import these goods. And that's the biggest problem about it um, is the confusion. Because while it's been imported maybe last year or last month under certain conditions, some of the goods will require special permission, special documents, special license. And if you've never done it before, it pays to check with the customs broker or New Zealand customs or New Zealand MPI. What are the input requirements? Do you have to have a license? Do you have some permits to be, to, uh, to be able to sell the products in New Zealand? Uh, there was a, an interesting case uh, a couple of months ago. It went to court, I believe, where two different brands and two different companies had a dispute. One company was trying to import cereals called Vita Bix. And the New Zealand manufacturer has a similar product called Witbix. While they were doing it on a smaller scale in the past, they were able to import Witbix in New Zealand. And I believe they were stopped in the last container because it was a big consignment and the competitor put a stop order and they had to argue who was right, who was wrong. Once again, you have to be careful with these kind of shipments because uh, while you can bring the goods up to New Zealand border, sooner or later you may have uh, a problem with the local supplier if you become uh, a serious competitor to them. The, the way you can check it, obviously you can talk to a customs broker or to a New Zealand customs, see what's been done in the past. Yeah, you have to be careful with brands, how similar it is, especially with building materials. Will it comply with local council regulations? Uh, while you may see a similar product been imported maybe it's for personal use in small quantities we don't know and you don't know but you have to if you want to sell it especially you have to check these things if you want to save a lot of money and hustle these situations with Vitabix, the way you're gonna incur a lot of costs because you have to pay for storage while the distribute is happening and you may not be able even to get your hands on this product so you lose the stock imagine how many thousands is that i'm a very small time importer of animal products mpi often intercepts my package and wants to get them fumigated which is fine because this biosecurity is important my problem is however that this process often takes a long time and i'm currently waiting on a parcel to get through which has arrived in March. When I read them, they often are not helpful. Is the way to get this process to move more quickly? Thank you for your question. Yeah, it's a common problem where you don't have control about the government authorities. They could be busy uh, if, it, if it's uh, peak season. And if you want to avoid these kind of situations, once again, you we don't know the details of this case. Do you have uh, all documents issued correctly to the same importer? Say the person that's bought the goods is the same that's importing the goods because this could be two different entities and the customs client code have to match uh, with everything. They, they want to be make sure it's, uh, it meets health and safety requirements to save your time. You want to talk to a customs broker or New Zealand Customs or New Zealand MPI and uh, find out what are the latest requirements because we all know about a recent case uh, where guns were being stopped and now are not allowed to be imported. So you have to check with the government what's, were there any changes in the last weeks, months uh, since you imported because there could be new requirements and you know your, pro your product may no longer be allowed for one or another reason or you are missing some of the documents and this is an evolving process you have to be a good friend with your customs broker and uh, be in touch or visit your local New Zealand customs office please tell me why is it important to submit the documents before the shipment leaves the port of origin origin thank you Lily the reason it is important because once inside it is inside the container there is not much you can do right and uh, it's not just about the documents it's also about the goods for example if you want to import samples to New Zealand and your supplier overseas can say yes 
we've been we've done it before and uh, there were no problems but the rules could change and to import samples you have to follow certain rules for example you have to label on the packaging that it is samples clearly not for sale it has to be in small quantity it has to be reasonable and there are other rules you, you have to meet if you don't know and it's already done uh, obviously you have to do it properly on the paperwork you have to separate your goods and declare it because if it's not declared on the paperwork and a customs officer will eventually find out then you will get in trouble you can get penalties there is an instant fine of I believe four hundred dollars and then uh, you could be blacklisted or you can get further inspections on following shipments, creates extra costs for you, it delays. So that's why it is important to um, get all your ducks in a row before you um, pay for, for the goods. Can you please confirm the tariff concession codes are different from importer, exporter, client codes? Yes. If you haven't done importing ever, then you have to have a client code and your supplier has to have a client code with New Zealand authorities. Uh, which which takes some if it's a peak season could take at least a couple of business days and if you've got an air freight coming in tomorrow and you don't have a customs client code you will pay for storage charges at the airport they charge now at least three hundred dollars a day you've got only one free or day of storage and then you'd have to pay for storage unless you've got some other arrangements and you'd have to pay extra to move it to a temporary facility for temporary storage and you don't want to pay anything extra. So talk to a uh, New Zealand customs officer or New Zealand customs broker to find out what kind of documents you need, what kind of client codes you need, and how to get it. You can get it for free or you can get it for a small fee from, from a customs broker. You can ask MPI to supply a copy of this fumigation certificate and find out the requirements for it at the MPI website or ask a customs broker. Yes. Uh, thank you for this comment. The, there is a lot of free information nowadays on the government websites and there are instructions how to complete the basic paperwork, step-by-step um, -step guidance. And if you get confused, you can uh, get in touch with us and we'll be happy to give you any help that you require. Thank you for the question. Do I need to have a customs code for importing household goods? There are two scenarios where you need a customs client code for importing used household goods. If you've got a vehicle, whether it's a car or motorbike, you would have to get a customs client code, even though if you owned it in the past. But if you import used household goods for your personal use and you meet certain requirements, like they, they have to be used for more than 12 months, then you don't need a customs client code. By the way, if you've just joined us, we are talking about five common mistakes that most importers make when they import or export goods through New Zealand border. If you enjoy this information, I appreciate your thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our show because we've got these useful interviews and webinars every single week. The next mistake that a lot of importers make is they try to be smarter than New Zealand customs. They may not even realize that they are making this mistake because the supplier may underdeclare their value of the goods for one or another reason. This could trigger with New Zealand customs a hold on your shipment. They could ask you to prove that you've paid this amount. Once again, your future shipments could be stopped if you um, try to avoid customs, it's also, also uh, you get, will get fines and you will get in trouble if you um, do that uh, with or without help from the supplier, whether you know it or not, because it is ultimate responsibility of the importer to make sure that you comply with all the government laws, regulations, and that you declare the true value of the importing goods, uh, of the, the true price that you paid for it. Another way that you could get into trouble if you um, import some goods, and I've already mentioned that, but it points out, reminding everyone that if your supplier adds extra samples without you knowing that, they may, they may do you a favor, but if somebody will discover it, you'll have to pay duty for it. Because say if you've got some samples worth $1,000 uh, in the whole container, 
then you'd have to pay duty on that on the thousand dollars even though you don't you, you think it's a sample and it should be free but if it doesn't mean the requirements and for some reason you didn't need the goods for a thousand dollars you would happily to accept it if it would be free but you don't you're, you're not going to be happy if you'd have to pay duty and import gst and it's going to be out of your budget or it's going to damage your cash flow so it's going to be a, a very unpleasant surprise if you don't tell your supplier your instructions uh, that you don't want any surprises and free samples is something that you have to be very careful with uh, another thing that customs is very careful about with items that incur a lot of duty whether it's alcohol or tobacco some importers declare low alcohol content or low tobacco content which means that customs can see the pattern they know the history of other importers and they they can pay your shipment to other shipments and if they see something is weird happening then they will ask you questions they will stop your shipment and um, your customs fees could double or triple y you won't be able to just walk away in many cases they can even seize the goods if it doesn't meet their requirements or they think you're trying to deceive the customs they can still chase you for this uh, import taxes and you're not gonna get your stock so there are a lot of unfortunate situations that could happen if you don't follow the rules and I'm not trying to scare you this is this is real this is happening you if you run a business if you do it properly you know you'll be fine and 99% of the shipments are fine as long as you're not trying to deceive anyone because it's to be frank it's not worth it i'm just gonna check some other questions uh if you've just joined us we're talking about five common mistakes that all importers make and we appreciate your questions feel free to type them now down in the comments below and if i've missed something please type it again because we have a lot of questions coming in sean says i will be receiving one plush toy sample do i still need to inform customs of this I was going to because it could be any purchased plush toy. You have to declare everything. Uh, if it's a low value item, I don't know, $500 value item, it may go through the border without it being stopped. Uh, if it comes through a New Zealand Post or some other courier company and you've just been lucky. But uh, you have to declare everything and you have to pay taxes unless you meet certain requirements of these goods being sampled. As I said, uh, different products have different requirements. You have to have uh, a label, not for sale, sample only. Uh, some lipsticks have other requirements. You can find out this from a New Zealand customs office or you can check with your local customs broker. In New Zealand, there is no GST applicable to buying a home for your family what if you have the home built overseas and then import into new zealand is it possible to have no gst charged if it's coming through the border you have to pay gst there are certain exemptions i'm not going to go through the details but in this case i'm pretty sure that you have to pay import taxes one of our customs brokers is watching if I stand to be corrected then I uh, will mention it in the notes but be prepared to pay for it uh, I'm gonna move to the next mistake when you import goods like parallel import or well-known brand from a manufacturer somewhere in Asia then you have to be careful that it is an authorized manufacturer because they can tell you anything they want and they will most likely get away with it because once they've got their money and they've exported their goods it's going to be your problem to prove it to new zealand customs or to a local brand that it's it's not a fake and it's been done properly you've got the right paperwork so you have to be careful where you buy your goods from you can seek testimonials from other new zealand importers from other shops and you don't want your goods to be seized and lose all the stock and money so you have to be careful with parallel imports if you've got any other questions feel free to type them now we will answer every single one during the talk or later uh, once again please join us next week uh, we will talk about common mistakes with cargo insurance do you need cargo insurance and how to select a freight forward or a customs broker and some of the things 
that a freight forwarder or a local customs broker is not telling you. Maybe they've forgotten to inform you about these things. And this is a small teaser for you because I think you will uh, get a lot of value. Make sure you join us next time. And till then, talk to you soon. Thank you for your time. Before you leave, by the way, um, just remember that uh, we mentioned about the giveaway. So we will honor that. If you listened to us and we appreciate your time, please type down in the comments below what's been your favorite tip throughout the talk uh, so you can avoid problems with New Zealand customs. And we will pick a random person from the comments. Uh, we will do that at the same time tomorrow on Friday, 3 p.m. And uh, you could be the lucky winner. And we will offer a $200 customs clearance service voucher on any import or export shipment of uh, that's been obviously commercially imported and we'll be able to help you and uh, give you guidance thank you for your time and don't forget to type your favorite tip enjoy the rest of the day